Yes. I felt quite sleepy. Um, <laughs> and I thought it's a bit sweet, isn't it? So then I decided, just for my own satisfaction, to change the mood. And I made <laughs> this more troubling. with those people. I think they're asking a valid question. They're saying, why doesn't it do anything to me? I think you have every right to expect art to do something for you. And if it doesn't, you should not take the blame for that. <laughs> you know, the, the assumption of the art world has always been that most people are too stupid to understand what artists are doing. And of course, this is very convenient for artists, but <laughs> you should all believe that. But I think you have every right to say, I don't get it, I don't like it. For example, just yesterday, somebody said to me, what is the most incomprehensible music you've ever heard? And two things came to mind. One was Chinese opera. Um, when I lived in Bangkok for a little while and I used to go to the Chinese opera because it so puzzled me. <laughs> I could not understand. It, it completely destroyed the idea for me that music was in some sense universal. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think music is entirely cultural and there isn't much that is universal in it. Just about the only universal thing is that when things get louder, it's sort of exciting. <laughs> but that's not really enough to base a whole aesthetic around, um, though several bands have tried. <laughs> um, but then I was thinking the only other thing that is as incomprehensible to me as Chinese opera is um, Derek Bailey. Now, probably a lot of you know Derek Bailey's work, and I'm sure some of you really respect him. And I would really love to respect him as well. He was a very nice man, I met him a couple of times. The music absolutely baffles me. And I'm not gonna pretend anymore that it doesn't. I don't feel inadequate as a human being that it doesn't connect with me. Um, and I want, to, I want to say to you all, don't feel inadequate. It's you who's, who it's got to work for. You don't have to come to it. It should come to you, I think. Um, don't, don't feel that um, you've let the artist down by not liking their work. So in the future, I want to see places, lovely buildings like this, where you go and you sit down and things, nice things happen to you, interesting things, perhaps slightly troubling things, calming things, things that make you reflect, things that give you a chance to think about things differently. And I would like that to be called art. I don't care if it isn't though. If it's called therapy, that's fine as well. Except, of course, that brings the unavoidable connotation of there being therapists around, which you don't want, <laughs> if possible. Um, nonetheless, I want, I want to stop this idea that art is something caged off in museums that you go and visit now and again and walk around and read the labels off. I mean, the way people look at paintings is so terrible. It's, it's the Japanese tourist syndrome that paintings look, read the label, 
read the label for 14 times as long as you looked at the painting. Have another quick glance, look, read the next label for 14 times as long as you looked at the painting. Bad labels in museums, please, that's uh, my one request. request. Um, but let's start think, taking this business seriously. We all respond to art. We all are very sensitive to these signals. We're all artists in our different ways, actually, even if it's only in the way we choose to dress or how we decorate cakes or how we write the kisses on our letters that we send to each other. We all are creatives, and we've been told that, no, I'm the creative, but you're not. You're the listener. I want to get away from that idea as well. I want these places to be places where you start to think about yourself again as that other kind of person, the creative person. Um, that's a political point as well. So in my pursuit of my big goal, which is universal basic income, yeah. universal basic income is based on the idea that if you give people the time and the space and the company, they will become creative. And that's probably true in nine cases out of ten. There are a few people who won't, <laughs> probably, um, but who knows. So that's all I have to say, really. Um, thank you very much for listening and for standing up so long and doing it. Thank you.